Hello and welcome to another Daily Dose of Insights powered by Container Exchange. My name is Christian and every other day we're bringing to you the key stories and data points that move container markets and your business. Starting off with a very interesting article I read yesterday, which discussed uh, the uh, perceived end of globalization, um, sort of meaning the fear that globalization might have peaked, and now world trade as a share of GDP is due to fall um, in light of, of course, all these disruptions and trends for nearshoring, friendshoring, reshoring, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The article, however, uh, comes to, con to the conclusion that in the data, we can't see that yet. Um, and also that this is not really to be expected. The world is uh, getting even uh, more interconnected these days. Um, the past few years, maybe less so on a, uh, uh, on a uh, goods level, but definitely so on a service level. So global trade in US dollar terms is continuously increasing as percentage of GDP. Uh, lastly, the article uh, comes to the conclusion that actually uh, what we will see is the shift uh, away from a bipolar world, so east versus west, um, towards a multipolar world um, with a more fragmented and more regionalized uh, supply chain uh, setup and uh, trade setup. Um, for us as container traders, trade forwarders, um, uh, stakeholders in the container logistics value chain, this means that um, there are uh, more fragmented value chains to be dealt with, um, more growth pocket actually uh, to be discovered uh, worldwide. And uh, ultimately, uh, we expect uh, a broader uh, base for business. Um, you just need to use data. You need to use intelligence tools to make sure that you address the right pockets um, at the right time. Now, talking about uh, data intelligence tools, I um, just want to quickly uh, share my uh, screen. Uh, just give me a second. Uh, here we go. I think you should see that now. Um, first off, I want to start with a quick look at our exchange uh, sentiment index, where uh, concurrently we ask uh, industry participants, what do you expect uh, container prices uh, to, to do, uh, to behave like in the next, uh, in the near future? Um, will they Will container prices uh, increase, uh, fall, or uh, stay stable? Um, and then this index is relatively similar to a net, pro net promoter score, so just uh, positive answers minus negative answers. Um, as you can see here, uh, since the beginning of February, since we started this index, um, we've consistently been in negative territories. So the industry um, had a very negative outlook on rates, on uh, prices uh, for the near future. This has turned now, uh, end of February, uh, yesterday, uh, for the first time, um, we're now in positive uh, territory. So sentiment seems to be changing. Um, of course, one data point doesn't yet make a trend, uh, but it looks promising as the first uh, indication. And um, this, by the way, coincides with positive um, uh, data, GDP and uh, consumer confidence data from China, also very different to what we discussed last week. Um, and then lastly, a quick look at our uh, container trading uh, dashboard. Uh, you can see all this uh, data also uh, already now or coming soon on uh, container exchange.com slash insights. So our data intelligence tool, uh, we're now here looking at 40 foot high cube cargo with the containers in Hamburg and Shanghai. Um, Hamburg being the gray line and uh, Shanghai being the uh, the blue time series. What we see here, um, this is uh, the last 14 months or so. What we see here is that um, in the last few days, we've seen a significant uptick in trading prices, um, sort of breaking out through the longer term uh, trend, uh, the longer term downward trend, now really a significant uptick. You also see this um, in the week on week price changes. So really 40, 50% price changes versus uh, last week, really, really uh, significant. And this is not just true for Hamburg and Shanghai. Um, if you look at, sorry, this might be a little bit hard to read. If you look at our week on week uh, price developments across all uh, uh, locations, um, the first column here is delta to last week. Most of our locations are in positive or at least only slightly negative uh, territory. Um, you see increases of Hamburg like 30% versus last week, uh, Le Havre 31%, uh, et cetera. Um, and also the US um, either neutral or in slightly uh, positive territory with Indianapolis uh, topping the list of uh, steepest price increases. Um, same actually true also in um, China with Southeast Asia being the only notable exception with sort of the, the biggest decreases. But this is, might also be uh, due to the fact that price in, prices have been relatively stable um, or even increasing in Southeast Asia uh, for the past uh, couple of uh, weeks. Now, this 
Um, quick outlook from our end, of course, uh, what does this mean? Um, sentiment is improving, container prices are spiking up. Um, so uh, there, there, there seems to be some, some good uh, trends, some good news coming. Um, of course, you have to keep in mind that container prices are also influenced by, not only by demand, but also by supply. Um, and so far, what we've seen is that the big sell-off wave of containers is still to be uh, to come. Uh, liners and uh, leasing companies are sitting on empty equipment, um, which is not being used right now. There's a surplus of containers. We've talked about it uh, relatively frequently, um, but the sell-off hasn't started yet. So supply is also restrained. Um, demand is ticking up. So we see uh, prices uh, ticking up. Very interesting uh, from our point of view. If you want to see more, um, investigate more locations, uh, head to container.com. Uh, containerexchange.com uh, slash insights uh, for more information and to continuously improve that tool. So if you have any uh, graphs, any analysis that you want to see, let us know and we'll build it for you. Cool. That's it for us from today. Uh, thanks a lot for tuning in. Um, have a good rest of the week and see you all on Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.